Yeah, read read how he hosted this club. <laughs> 50 Cent was met with a roaring crowd in Miami. Brought the house down as the clock struck midnight at 11 Miami, 11 Miami, causing him to do a countdown a bit late. We hear the Indie Club rapper arrive with a group of 20 on the red carpet at 11.30. When he took the stage 15 seconds before midnight, everyone was cheering. Was cheering his name so loud he couldn't do the countdown. So he did a song. All the smoke machines went off at midnight and he went right into Pimp. Club goers didn't miss out entirely on getting a countdown. After his first song, he did the countdown at 12.02 before going to hits like Candy Shop and Disco Inferno. I mean, he did, Disco Inferno. He basically did an hour of work. <laughs> <laughs> miss the countdown <laughs> which I had to say you've been in a bar or a club on New Year's Eve like, nobody has the synchronized countdown anyway so who cares no, you, you could have told them it was midnight two, after two Whenever, minutes yeah. and nobody knows or cares but I love that he shows up at 1130 with a group of 20 people <laughs> back in the club this is it somebody Go tweeted at me they called their it was her brother in California right after midnight to wish him Happy New Year. And yeah. it wasn't New Year's there, supposedly. What? And I was like, that's a scam. He's scamming you. He's got misinformation or something. Uh, time is the same everywhere. They would ask you the date. It would be Jan 1. Amen. Clearly. That guy's wrong. He needs a new brother. So the, the uh, slap in the face was for Betty White, just weeks from turning 100, to be struck down. I got good news for you. The Betty White movie about being 100, which apparently exists, what? is still going to air next month. That's right. Oh, they did all this stuff. God. People Magazine did this whole article on her turning 100. Who wants to see that movie, by the way? Well, Betty, Betty, here it is. Betty White's 100th birthday party event will still go on. <laughs> but she's not having a birthday. Couldn't they just change it to a funeral? Uh, it's January 17th. It's kind of an awkward bit of programming, doesn't it? It's a tribute to her. It was set to play in movie theaters for one night only on her birthday. <laughs> I want a frisk account counting the uh, gate receipts for that. It's titled Betty White. Who's going to that? Betty White, 100 years young. Oops. <laughs> It'll still go on this plan despite Friday's tragic news. The event's producers. Well, I don't even know these two guys are. Wouldn't you love to have so a photograph the of the entire group of people that actually chooses to go to that event? I would love to see those people just to go, hmm. <laughs> So that's what they look like. <laughs> they probably were just in Times Square. I <laughs> think they're older than that. You think so? They were in Times Square 40 years ago, maybe. No, a lot of young people like Betty White, to which I say, why? Well, I, she's a sweet nice. She's, she's, she's been fine. around for so long. She's fine, nice. but we act like she's... Uh, yeah, she was in the big, Golden Girls, big deal. Rest in peace, Betty. Is it really that hard to be nice? Apparently, yeah, nowadays. Oh, no, you're right. It is, and it live is a pretty long, exceptional quality now to be nice. Uh, but the other huge event was, of course, and God, how did he make it to 85? John Madden dies at 85. What a bummer. People that big don't usually live that long. No, he's a lot taller than I thought he was or ever remember him being. Yeah, I remember on the sideline with the with Oakland. Yeah. Back in the day. he, By the way, winning his coach to have won over 100 games in the history of the NFL. More than Lombardi? Yeah, he's got like 100 and, 110 wins and 33 losses oh, or something shit. like wow. that. Yeah, incredible. Right. We won 10 games every year. I, Brandon and I were talking about it before the show. It's weird how it's kind of a testament to him, too, about how. See, you mentioned his coaching. I remember him as a broadcaster, and then kids today, it's all about Madden, the football game. I know. It, it really seems like Madden, the football game, was the thing people were talking about. It's going to be his lasting legacy. Yeah. When did that, that wild? Co come out in the late 80s? No, 90s. Mid 90s? Yeah. Okay, so it's been around a long time. Yeah. Yeah, but every young person has played it. Oh my God. I mean, yeah. I've even played it. It's synonymous. Not with them. a lot. I asked, Ju I asked Julie, I go, hey, do you know who John Madden is? She goes, that gay purview guy. Come back to him tonight. And I said, yeah, but do you know why it's the gay purview? <laughs> no, not really. Like, he was a broadcaster on NFL games. I said, he's also the namesake for Madden. She goes, oh, really? <laughs> no clue. No, it doesn't register on her. People were, were posting the gay review, and first I was like, oh boy, is that okay? No, and of course then, not. That's I, why it's I, fine. I listened to them. Those are really good. I have to say, I'm proud of a lot of things in the history of the show, but I, I'm very proud of that. That good. was really good. That was their very words. well done. Their words. I didn't do anything. Hey guys, it's new on the gay channel. What is it? You get man to man, and you're the guy that's man to man. 
you have to beat your man. And Thomas just comes in and unloads on Terrence. It's Monday night gay per view. There's no question that Dante heard John coming. He's been rolling them all night, but they still look relatively fresh. Gay orgy competitions are always intense, but these homos really pump it up a notch on Monday nights because they know the entire Packer populace is watching. I guess he got him in the back. Huh? You got Tony Fisher in the back. Well, that was an illusion. Sometimes the head will start out in front. The action's even hotter and kinkier than ever before. As he goes in, Harris starts to bite on it. Then as he goes up, he had to grab him. We just rubbed off. This game from you looks like it's going to overheat. I mean, he gets in the hole, and he hits him as square as square can be. Where in the heck did that one come from? What happened? today if you want to see the beefiest guys doing the gayest stuff. He ended up down there on all fours. I usually don't expect that from the career about to be another. Man, is that gay or what? <laughs> just takes on the guard, helmet and hands, just, just stuffs that whole hole. <laughs> For the man against boys. So you have three guys off there, and then Colbert just comes right underneath. Just dial 1-800-HEY-CUTIE today for Monday Night Gay Review. Wow. Vince Lombardi would say, what the heck's going on <laughs> out there? It is so gay! Okay. And I obviously would not do this today. No, that could not be made today. <laughs> but I, I, I hate to point this out, but it was incredibly popular. Yeah. People really loved those, and... <laughs> it was stolen by a lot of radio stations. Too. I remember it popping up. So that was uh, in the day of Napster. Yes. And it popped up on Napster all the time, never giving credit to the show. No. And then other stations. You want came. your point zero 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 one cent? Well, you. I know, but on Napster, you know where it's all traded. Other well, stations. We radio, mentioned the show. Other radio stations, and then put their name on it. Put their name on yeah. it. It's like. Uh, I think Stoney played it. He did. There was a uh, and um, Sminty wrote about it. <laughs> yeah, well, we had people immediately yeah. contacting us. Oh my God, Stoney just played a game for you. It was like, yeah, he probably got it. You should. It's funny. And there were uh, there were a lot of shows that played it. I mean, there were a few big shows that played it. And I remember hearing that. And, uh, in fact, somebody. Do you remember this? Someone said John Madden actually had that played for him. Oh really? Yeah, and he laughed his ass off. No, I don't remember I don't who said John that. I don't think John Madden would laugh his ass off. At remember, he didn't like Frank Caliendo's impersonation. I don't know. Oh, that's right. Was it? You really didn't like Frank Caliendo's impersonation? No, that's a that's a that's pretty hilarious story. I think um, I think he eventually warmed up to it when he realized that he wasn't making fun of him, quote unquote. Yeah. Well, that's the problem. You know, all it what happened was uh, I feel like I'm on the defensive already. What happened was people would point out pieces of audio from when the football because we had yeah. taken a couple that sound they very sexual. They still do. They still do. I get no. emails all the time. you got to pull this at uh, third quarter, about two minutes left. They said this. Yeah. Make a new gay review. Uh, and you could. You could make one every week. Yeah. And for some reason, John Madden's were were more entertaining than most. Because he would always talk about filling the hole and yeah, and oh. guys mucking around and heads and helmets. Oh. Stop acting to act Helmet to helmets. And just big, strong guys. So, anyway, um, I saw somebody posted on one of our fan pages, and there weren't very, very many comments, and I was kind of surprised. I wondered if, were people afraid to comment? Not if they would be afraid to comment on that, would they? No. Not the no. fan page, no. Because um, it, was, it was not meant to be insulting to anyone. It was just taking something out of context, just like Stanley Kubrick and Tom Cruise or Larry King and Tom Cruise. Is that Larry <laughs> King and Tom Diane Cruise? Diane Sawyer and... Uh, Diane oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, No, no, Barbara Walters. Yeah. And Anne Heche. That's right. Because he was ending her mouth. mouth. Yeah. Um, no, those were all the same type, but now... Because he was entering your mouth. I felt bad when I heard it and I laughed. I felt like, oh, I should, oh am I supposed to feel bad that we did these? Because no, I, I, I will acknowledge it. Different times. We would, no, we would not do them now because I would just expect it's, that someone would get really upset and someone would play it for okay. people to make them more upset. I, I hate that you're making this a defensive thing, but it's, the joke isn't about being gay. The joke is taking lines out of context that sound like they could be something else. And they sounded incredibly yeah. like something else. Can I play another one? 
I kind of want to hear. It's happening on the gate channel. I think you see if it has sticky yeah. stuff on it. Yeah. And, and who would have fucked, huh? The best of days had more sticky stuff on him than that. The That's best right. of Pitt Summerall and John Madden's Game Mail Orgy Competition. Here he is right here. Nickname's Meat. Nickname ought to be Lot of Meat. <laughs> Here's the unit that's done the magic. 21 years at the world's biggest homos doing the gayest stuff. See that left hand in there? And then the right hand in there. Oh, he got a double dipper on that yes, one. he did. He just kind of lobbed it. Including the hosts themselves. You ready, John? You can kind of feel that one coming right there. Next comes the shave and then dinner. Plus, you'll get all the finest performances by the most valuable homos past. It's like Grant uh, let that kind of get away from him, didn't he? Uh, on his chin or on his no, head? No, on his head. Roger looks like he's tossed it before. Revisit some of the unsung homos. The sure-handed one. There he is right here. Nickname's Meat. Nickname ought to be Lot of Meat. <laughs> and here are all the biggest moments in the history of the gay male orgy competition. And there is a hole right there. And whoop, a couple of pretty good shots. Plus the clutch performances that have made gay reviews so exciting. There's no room in there. I mean, you can get on a guy, but when you get on a guy and you knock him out of the hole, that makes that hole wide. Knock him into your own guy and knock him back. Revealing interviews <laughs> with a gay participants. You did come through the manhole. Pat Summerall may be retiring, but his work with John Madden on Gay Purview lives on forever. Pat, did you ever think you would see one of these things on a football field? Not. I thought it was a new golf club. Order the best of <laughs> Pat Summerall and John Madden's Gay Mail Orgy Competition today. Well, when you're going to throw a guy a bone, throw him two bones in a row. And home <laughs> out to your heart's content. Last week, I thought that he was tight. And when he's relaxed, I think he's going to open up. Call 1-800-HEY-CUTIE. We had one of those things fly in our booth. Hit me. <laughs> That's not the best one. Uh, well, there's, I have another one. It's the original, original. How many? There's like five of them, aren't there? Yeah, I'll check. At here. least. But a lot of people also will know from listening to the show that you guys had two famous phone calls with Three John Madden. Oh, yeah. They're uh, they're quick. They're brief. Here was the first one. Heads up. Oh, boy. Hello. John? Yeah. Hey, it's uh, Drew and Mike calling on WRIF Radio. How are you doing uh, this morning? No, I'm still sleeping. Man. Oh, John. Oh, John. I'm sorry. Just Can we wait. Wait a second. Back. John? John? That was the recognizable voice of Mr. John. <laughs> <laughs> the phone is... What in the hell? <laughs> oh, yeah, <come> John? <laughs> don't, you, don't you picture him sitting there like this? <laughs> yes! <laughs> <You jerk. laughs> John? John? <laughs> what in the hell happened? <laughs> Changing his voice from yeah. hello to... Uh, I mean, it's incredible. That's I can't believe no, how I'm much... I'm still sleeping, man. Play it again. I just want to hear that beginning part where he goes into acting mode immediately. Heads up. Oh, boy. Hello? John? Yeah. Hey, it's uh, Drew and Mike calling on WRIF Radio. How are you uh, doing this morning? No, I'm still sleeping. Oh, John. <laughs> you know what? I forgot about that. Yeah! <laughs> like he's so ready to talk to anybody but you. I think it's the same thing on the next one. Yeah, he here he is in the same meeting, call. though. Hello? John? Yeah? Hey, it's Drew and Mike calling on WRIF Radio. Uh, yeah, I'm in a meeting right now, so I can't talk to you. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, I think we might have woken you up, uh, woke you up the other oh, day, and yeah, we ap did. apologize for that. Okay. We're sorry about that. We love you, John. Thank you. Congrats Thank you. on the Hall of Fame thing, by the way. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll you. look forward to hearing you on Sunday night. Okay, great. Thanks, Thanks John. <laughs> All right, John. <laughs> <laughs> what a good, oh, cool guy, though, man. Hell yeah. Really I nice. love John, man. Let me see if this is the original. Hey, guys, it's new on the Gay Channel. What is that? Yeah, he just throws a lob up there. Oh, geez, that was a terrible lob. There's Sammy right there, helmet to helmet. It's Monday night gay preview. So he's getting up, and then he's going to ride him. You see him? He's square on him. And watch what happens. It's right again is going to come on him, and he's going to see it this time and get rid of it quickly. Gay orgy competitions are always intense, but these homos really pump it up a notch on Monday nights because they know the entire Packer populace is watching. The only thing that went right through his hands and hit him in the face. Uh, he better, he better get something stuck up in there. You know the action's getting really hot when your hosts, the Eminem boys, get into the act. Well, there's a two-man booth and then there's a three-man booth and then there's a five-man booth. <laughs> this gay 
from you looks like it's going to overheat. Even the coaches are going homo. It just looks like a guy that is very, very anxious to please Bill Parcells. Order today if you <laughs> want to see the beefiest guys doing the gayest stuff, like DP. John, that's the two-headed monster they have going right now. I think Tate and Bell has a little more of Clinton Portis in him than he does either Mike Anderson or Ron Bell. Man, is this gay or what? There's a lot of hair. Yes, he does. Just dial one 800 hey Cutie today for Monday Night Gay Per View. So, you know, we, we always talked about how chiseled he is and, and you know, very few guys. I mean, he looks like an Adonis, I mean, and he loves to show it off, too. It is so gay! <laughs> yeah, Michael. The Summerall ones are the best. Uh, yeah. He, that's how good John Madden was. He made Pat Summerall sound good. Oh, man. Now, the what was better, Olympic gay per view or NBA gay per view? My God, I don't remember NBA. We did a few of those, didn't Olympic we? has always been close to my heart just because of Wabo! Well, I think this is the, yeah, this is the Winter Olympic one. Which also we could not make today, too. No, no. Just acknowledge it. It's coming to the Gay Channel! What the hell is that? It's, like it's Olympic Gay Per View! Steve, one of the advantages of being tall is that you can let the knees come up all the way to the chest. You check it out, he's got his c*** hanging out his pocket. <laughs> the most highly trained buff young athletes in the world, homoing out. Nice technique through the middle section. Just shows you all the strength that this kid has. And the only judge is you! He said he could slay a dragon. He just showed you right there. Well, here's another dragon. Dragon Slayer for the USA. He's going so fast, none of the Finns can even keep up with him. Lick your lips as the Olympic Village is turned into an international homo pit. He slows down, he checks his speed, but gets a nice grab underneath the tip. Everybody's a medal <laughs> winner in Olympic Gay Per View. Where else can you see a hunky American loser mix it up with a wimpy Russian figure skater? And today, oh, wow. he is at the top! USA! USA! <laughs> he's getting bucked around, he's in the back, holding on for dear life. Looks like we're getting gold for size. This is so cute. This is going to hurt him. Come on, finish him off. USA. USA. Wow. Oh, there it is. And the crowd's going nuts. Olympic Gay Per View. The same competitive atmosphere and family participation of any other Olympic sport. And there's Dad Larry up the stands relieved. A solid effort. And the crowd is delighted. Tell me, you haven't wondered about these Femi figure skaters getting it on with each other. Your legs want to pry apart when you're going super fast. What do those dual or double luge guys do when you turn them loose? Getting back in, it's important right here to keep tight. Call 1-800-HEY-CUTIE today and do your personal best watching Olympic Gay Per View. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, that, that could not be made today. Whammo! Uh, that definitely could not be made today. No, I wouldn't even try. But, I mean, can't pretend that they weren't made. No, no, it happened. I guess. Um... NBA gay per view? That was a finals, wasn't it? I don't remember this one. This reminded me of the Magic of Magic, by the way. Oh, the four that Magic was of Magic. Awesome. Uh, five or six of them. Maybe. It's coming to the gay channel. What is up? It's NBA gay per view. Bryant trying to shake off Allen Iverson. Who better than Marv Albert and the gang to introduce Butter. fans to the newest gay per view spinoff? Garnett was so wide open. Marv, you could have hit him with that. Pack. Well, let's not get crazy. Duncan trying to go back door. We're holding nothing back. You'll see the NBA's biggest stars pulling out their best. Homo moves! Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sons of a facial on Ray Allen. <laughs> There's loads of facials and no editing out those near facials. Three on one, O'Neal lobs and for Grady not able to handle it. And when's the last time you heard Jim Gray asking MJ about doing an anal scene? That just cursed, he said he didn't turn around, he was going to give me a mulligan. I know he told me that. I would, I would have turned around if I knew that, but I, I didn't think about that. Michael may be getting up there, but he proves he can still handle the young fellas on gay per view, NBA style. That's too blown. Back to back. <laughs> Michael is feeling, uh, he's blushing out there. And don't miss your favorite stars unabashedly masturbating. Tim Duncan trying to put on his own show. Kevin Garnett will handle himself. Kobe's putting on a show. Well, he said he was going to enjoy himself. Who'd have thunk it? Individual gang bang and group scenes. Uh, nobody's going to be left out of this one this afternoon. I mean, they've given it to each other where they can finish easily. Enjoy the NBA's best homo action and the best behind-the-scenes homo commentary. Stoyakovich showing the kind of range and touch that he had last night. Call 1-800-HEY-CUTIE to order NBA Game Perfume today. Ryan trying to shake off Allen Iverson. Oh, boy. <laughs> Do you want to hear a fun Madden story? Yeah. This is from uh, Matt Millen, relayed this story. Hey, while, while you're telling the story, Brandon, you think you can find maybe Frank Caliendo doing Madden? Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> I would love to hear some Frank Caliendo. Did he did he eulogize him or anything? Caliendo? He stated the question. It? Maybe he has. I know I know Juice did. I know Juice has already commented on Antonio Brown too. Oh, has he? Yeah. yeah. Is there anything more than Antonio Brown before Nothing. we start up into the story? <laughs> Nothing. Well, nothing online. Not that I've seen. I also want this is a great anecdote from O.J. Simpson on Betty White. Got a call today from one of my kids telling me that the incredibly nice, sweet Betty White had moved on. Sad. Now, mm. Betty lived on Carmelita Street. This is North Carmelita, right where Cliffwood, Bristol, Rockingham all kind of came together. Huh? And back then, I had a couple of cats, uh, Bugsy. Yeah. And Sashi, they were Abyssinians. If anybody had Abyssinian, you know. What a great storyteller. So relatable. Out, he knows how to uh, paint a picture. Normally, they'd be in my and backyard a going through a lot of drama with these mockingbirds and this willow tree. He's got an anecdote about everyone. We couldn't find him. And, oh, uh, yeah. Consternation. Everybody was upset. And we were making signs, putting pictures on them that we're going to hang in the neighborhood when we got a call. Where did these people get the time to make these signs? And it was first thing came to mind. And she says, oh, Hey, uh, you're looking for your kitten. He's here at the house. So we went over there and she had him in his arms. Did you and murder her? Talked and she was so sweet. And uh, maybe uh, three weeks hit later off. or so, even before we really noticed that he was missing, Betty White calls and says, hey, Buzzy's here again. And no way. So we go over and I'm saying, what is it, Betty? Do, do you have catnip on your property? Why is this cat always? Anyway, maybe three months later, uh, Buzzy is missing. We just went to her house, right? And she said she hadn't seen him. We were in her front yard talking, and we hear meow. And right there in the tree that bordered her property, there was Bugsy. Never understood what that was about. I I guess she was trying to get away from me, you murderer. She's so sweet that the cats just, you know, gravitate to her. her. In any event, my condolences to her family, and uh, uh, rest in peace. He's so lovely. What a sweet lady. Wow. That is a long story, but quite well told. <laughs> what a stupid story. <laughs> Basically what a bad pet owner OJ is. That's what the story's about. Her family was very comforted by that story, by the way. You, just, uh, you should know that. If you could only have one guy, just one guy, that you put in the Pro Football <laughs> Hall of Fame, I don't know why that would be. Maybe because there's a, a small Hall of Fame and, and there's a fire inspector that says you can only have one guy that, that can go in that Hall of Fame. That guy, I mean, that guy's going to be Brett Favre. Oh, Amo, oh, And I think in a dictionary, when you have the word competitor, you ought to just put his picture there. He could do things on the field that nobody else could do. I, I mean, he could do things most people couldn't even imagine doing. But as amazing as Brett Favre the player was, let me tell you about Brett Favre the man. Back in 2004, we we're talking to Brett Favre at Lambeau Field, and we're, you know, just having a normal interview, and a squirrel came running across the field, and, and uh, I guess it tripped and injured itself. I, I, mean, I, I, I wasn't really paying attention to the squirrel, but Brett Favre, in the middle of the interview, saw the squirrel trip, and. Brett looks at the squirrel and says, oh no, that squirrel is limping. I mean, I didn't even know a squirrel could limp. So Brett Favre runs over and helps that little guy. Brett Favre made that squirrel a little cast. And then he made a little squirrel crutches. <laughs> I mean, who, who makes a, a squirrel crutches? I'll tell you who does. Brett Favre does it. And most people would have sent that squirrel on its way. But Brett Favre was worried that squirrel wouldn't get away. Maybe he's being chased by a predator or a bigger squirrel that wanted whatever that squirrel had gathered. So Brett Favre taught that squirrel karate. And I said to Brett, I didn't know you knew karate. And that's when Brett Favre said to me, I didn't know karate. I taught it to myself when I saw that squirrel trip. That tells you something right there. Any man who could learn karate that fast. I kind of prefer when he's winging John Madden. Yeah. <laughs>
when he starts babbling. Yeah. <laughs> well, he famously went on, uh, was it Letterman, and did and did Madden on Letterman. Is a uh, sports legend both on and off the field. He's been the NFL's premier color commentator for more than 25 years and recently was inducted into the uh, Professional Pro Football Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, here's John Madden. John, come on up. Good to have you on the show. Nice to nice to see you. How are things going? Pretty good, Dave. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of places you could be, but I mean, anytime you're in a place like this, you think, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean things start to get. You, know, you want to be on a, in a funny place, and this is one of those funny places. And if for another place, and it's not as funny. Think, I mean, why am I in that place? I, I, what I wanted to be was in a funny place, and boom. I mean, I'm out here right now, Dave. Good. Thank you. Thank you. It's an exciting time for uh, you and football. I mean, you're in the Hall of Fame, and you went to a new network and everything. How, how's all that going? Yeah, I mean, a new network. I mean, you wouldn't know about switching networks, Dave, but I mean, it, it, it's just one of those things that, you know, you go to a different place, and you do different things. Uh, still working with Al Michaels, of course, the, the greatest announcer in the world, if you don't count like 30 or 40 other guys. <laughs> I mean, he's, I mean, I mean uh, he stands on a box yeah. to be the same height as me, but I mean, 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 it's great working there and great doing what we're doing there and, and, and doing the things we do, and as long as we keep doing them, I mean, I mean, you know, that's, that's, like, that's all about. Yeah, it is. I do remember at the very tail end of Madden's broadcasting career, I remember a lot of people going, oh, he needs to hang it up, he's, he sucks. A lot of people came hard at him towards Was he the losing end. it? Yeah, I never liked him on HD because I thought he always looked like he was wearing a John Madden mask. No, he looks like a monster. Yeah. He did. He looked he was scary. But at the end, he would just state the obvious a lot, and people didn't like it. Well, he was, you know, how old was he when he stopped? I mean, he was, I had me in his he was 70s. 85 when he died, so maybe yeah. mid-70s? Yeah. Well, been. Keith Jackson was going a long time, and so was uh, Pat Summerall. Oh, was he was, oh boy, Summerall. Yeah, was, he was uh, sort of hitting the end. The, the infamous Cotton Bowl. His purple yeah. hands. <laughs> but I've never seen Tom Masley as bummed as when Sean and Belichian pointed out to him those purple hands. Because <laughs> Tom just wants to believe Pat Summerall is Pat Summerall, 1970. I have to say, what, the thing that sucks the most about getting old is when you fuck anything up. People immediately say, oh my God, he's getting sold. Sure. If I mispronounce a word or anything, it's always because, oh my God, he's sold. So <laughs> there is that part. Well, like I, I said, my dad was in the hospital. And so when I was talking to him, it was right when it broke that Madden died. And I said, hey, you outlived John Madden. He's like, what? Like, well, Madden not died. technically. I know, not age. Literally, he did. But And then I said, hey, we outlasted Harry Reid. Because that, those, those new, that news broke. Like within an hour of each other, I'm like was John, did John Madden get in a car accident with Harry Reid? They both I, died at the same time. I saw all this total heaviness about Harry. I was Reed. so I'm pissed. Like, I'm like, oh come on, I, you know, when a politician dies, I unless they're a president, I just cannot I, I, get that worked up about it. I was so pissed that Harry Reid led the nightly news, and then it was John Madden. And I'm sitting there going, I think John right. Madden probably touched way more lives than Harry Reid. I know there's an airport named after him. Probably in a more positive way stuff. too. Sure, but I was just surprised. I don't know why. I was just surprised that that led the. I mean, broadcast. I don't want to. I don't want to judge what he did or he didn't do, but I just politi I just I hate why. politicians. That's, I just yeah. fucking hate them, and they're all about themselves. And when they start acting like, and it's just when they put their own names on things, and it's like, God, come on. There's so many people who actually do something. Yeah. So here's a here's a Madden story from Matt Millen. Um, he was talking about how John Madden had three rules for his football players. Because Millen played for him, right? Did he play for him? No, that he would have been a Raider afterwards. Early 80s. Would have been close. Yeah. But he knew him well. He said, number one, be on time. Number two, pay attention. Number three, play like hell when I tell you to. Those were Madden's three rules. But he had a lesser known rule for his bus passengers on the Madden Cruiser. And it was, nobody takes a dump in the Madden <laughs> Cruiser. <laughs> Only three people broke the rule in all of Madden's years of busing. According to Matt Millen, they were... Fox producer Richie Zynots. I don't know who that is. It's the only trivia question he's the answer to, by the way. <laughs>